Yes. Well, good morning, everyone. Good afternoon. Um, this is a, it's a great thing to be able to do. And I look out and I see a lot of people who worked really hard to make this happen. And we are all grateful. We're here because Massachusetts is the leader in smart, strong, common sense gun laws. And now we've come together to enact our state's most significant gun safety legislation in a decade. This is a historic achievement, and we honor all who helped make it a reality and who champion health and safety in Massachusetts. <clears throat> I'm really grateful to our fantastic speaker, the Senate President, who continue to make Massachusetts the leader on this issue and so many others, to Representative Michael Day and Senator... <laughs> And Senator Cindy Cream. Who chaired the conference committee with members including Rep. Gonzalez, Senator Bruce Tarr, Senator Joan Lovely, Rep. Joe McKenna. We have so many folks joining us here today as well. Um, Representative, excuse me, Governor's Council Devaney is here. Um, we have so many members of the legislature here. Um, I see Rep. Tommy Vitolo, Rep. Jack Lewis, Rep. Gentile, Rep. Donahue, Rep. Owens, Rep. Chicolo, Rep. Linsky, Rep. Decker, Senator Timothy, Senator Eldridge, Rep. Worrell, Rep. Barber, Rep. Howard, Rep. Conley, Rep. Mahoney, uh, among others, and I'm sure more will be noted as we move through today, but it's a testament to uh, how committed everybody is to this issue. From our team, our Secretary of Public Safety and Security, Terry Reedy, and his team, Commissioner Robbie Goldstein, and leaders from across the Department of Public Health and Executive Office of Health and Human Services, Director Christine Doctor of the Gun Violence Prevention Unit in the Attorney General's Office, and as a former AG, I appreciate Attorney General Campbell's commitment on this issue. Our district attorneys, um, DA Tucker, DA Morrissey, DA Chagru, Chiefs of Police are here, represented by Chief Tommy Fowler from Salisbury, Chief Bradley, Chief Bill Brooks, uh, among others. Community leaders, Gladys Vega of La Collaborativa and others. Faith leaders, including Reverend Jeffrey Brown, Reverend Ray Hammond, Bishop Borders, Reverend William Dickerson. All the advocates from the Mass Coalition to prevent gun violence, as well as... <laughs> as well as uh, national organizations like Moms Demand Action, Everytown, and Giffords. <laughs> and especially the survivors of gun violence whose experience, whose voices guide us, uh, including Juanita Bachelor, who you will hear from shortly.
Councillor Jacobs is here as well, I assume. Um, look, we lead in Massachusetts because we know what's at stake. It's about people's lives. It's about the health and well-being of neighborhoods, of communities. It's about young people's futures and making sure that they have a future. And that's why this law is so important. And it's why we take on this national crisis, this ongoing and needless epidemic of gun violence. We want our communities to be safe and healthy. We have a duty, an obligation to prevent these harms. And we know that strong, smart gun laws save lives. Because to a family grieving an unthinkable loss, to a community traumatized continually by violence, to a victim of domestic violence, doing better than other states isn't good enough. Because we hold ourselves to a higher standard. And that standard is about ending the pain, ending the trauma, ending the gun violence. That's, not, that's why we're not resting on really important legislation. And I want to give credit to the legislature for enacting um, what it's done over the years in this realm. Um, but the work continues, and especially in the face of misguided Supreme Court decisions, it's up to us here in Massachusetts to look after and protect our own. And that's what this action is about. You see everyone united here today. That's a good and important thing, and it's the kind of collective action that we need. So we're taking action to combat ghost guns and 3D printed guns, because as technologies advance, our laws need to advance with them. We're taking action to strengthen our red flag law, because it's our duty to ensure that guns aren't in the hands of people who are a danger to themselves or to others. We take action today to invest in resources in our communities because gun violence is a public health crisis. So we're going to focus those investments as well on equity because for far too long, certain communities have suffered disproportionately by the spate of gun violence. I want to thank our legislative leaders once again for making this day possible, and I want to thank the survivors the activists, especially the survivors, know that we will work together to do what it takes to keep our neighbors, our communities, and our state safe. It's now my honor to introduce someone whose leadership has kept Massachusetts in the forefront of this work for more than a decade. He led the way and helped craft our major gun law in 2014. His swift action to review our state gun laws immediately following the Supreme Court decision in, 2020, in 2022 um, has made today's historic step possible as well. I'm proud to call him a partner in government, Speaker of the House, Ron Mariano. Hey. Thank you, Governor. I'm losing my voice. This is... <clears throat> I want to begin by thanking everyone who's here. Um, without the support of everyone here, it would have been a tough and lonely battle. But with the support of all these different groups, and particularly our partners in the Senate, once we saw the Broome decision, we knew we could rally the troops and begin to attack the holes that we thought were in this decision. And I want to give particular credit to the chairman, Mike Day, and Senator Cream for their leadership on this. You know, as we stand here, and I think we're being sued by the NRA, which I think is a real badge of honor uh, for all of us, that we have their attention and they're not happy, which makes me very, very happy. <laughs> so we're here today for all the reasons that the governor enumerated. But we're really here for the folks who are outside today 
enjoying the ability to walk around safely without fear of being gunned down in the streets under a totally misguided decision by a Supreme Court that seems to have lost touch with what's going on in America. It is a real problem that we are going to face. And thank God we have two cooperative bodies and a governor that will step out and lead. That's what this is about. This was about taking a decision that we thought and I use the royal we because I think we were all in agreement, that it was a pretty bad decision, had to be fixed. We didn't want to operate under those rules. We in Massachusetts knew we deserved better. And it took a while. It took a while to get here. Some disagreements all ironed out and now we're able to point to this bill as a correction to the misguided decisions made by the Supreme Court. So I really can't thank, I can't thank the members of the conference committee. The members of the conference committee deserve an awful lot of credit. Um, these are sticky issues and, and it's hard to believe I started doing this in 2014. That's, been doing this a while. But, but I understand how difficult these issues are and how personal these issues are, both to the gun owners and to the non-gun owners. But they stayed with it, they kept talking, and we have a bill I think that really does lead the nation again in making Massachusetts the safest gun state in the nation. So I thank you all. Thank you so much, Mr. Speaker, and uh, appreciate what you said about the, the stickiness of all of this. And, you know, I know having litigated NRA challenges in the past, uh, we're going to be prepared for whatever comes our way. And I do appreciate and echo, amplify the words of support and gratitude to members of the conference committee uh, for, for getting this over, over the finish line. With that, I introduce our Senate President, Karen Spilka. Thank you, Governor Healy, for signing this very strong bill and for your leadership on gun safety, dating back to your time as AG. Uh, all the way to DA, actually, um, long time. Uh, thank you. And I want to thank the Lieutenant Governor Driscoll and Majority Leader of the Senate, Cindy Cream, for all that she has done. C Cindy, Senator Le Cream, Majority Leader Cream, has been an incredibly strong gun activist and leader in the Senate in fighting for gun safety. And from the bottom of my heart, I want to thank you for sticking with it, working with Chair Day, and getting us what will be and we will continue to have the strongest gun safety laws in the nation. I believe, I, I believe, I believe that you will see other states using this bill as a model for their gun safety because we were the strongest before this bill. Now we are way ahead of other states. Thanks to Senator Cream, Chair Day, Joan, Senator Lovely, uh, Senator Tarr, Rep. Gonzalez, and all of the members that are here from both the Senate and the House. Thank you for your advocacy for making sure that this bill is the strongest possible bill that we could have. And I want to also thank the law enforcement that's here today 
and that stood with us and worked with us in also helping to pass a very strong bill and supported the, the, the gun safety bill and are here today because they are also our strong partners in ensuring that we keep guns out of the hands of those that should not have it, but also recognize the constitutional rights of the members of our society, but keep our, it is a balance, but keep our residents as safe as we possibly can. I think that that balance is not easy to keep, not easy to make, but this bill makes that balance possible. So again, thank you for doing that and thank you to all of the partners. Thank you, I look out and I see so many advocates here as well who have stayed with us, fought with us, and continued to make sure that we stay the strongest course that we possibly could stay. And thank you for that. Thank you for using your voices and keeping your voices loud and strong. And thank you especially to the survivors in this room and your families. This is not easy, I'm sure, for any of you. Hopefully, you can see pieces in this bill that you helped advocate for, you helped make stronger, to hope that other families are safer because of your work, because of your voice. And for that, from the bottom of our hearts, we thank you for that. We are here, we are here to celebrate a number of things. First and foremost, we're here to celebrate lives that will be saved because of this legislation. Kids in classrooms, people enjoying public events, music festivals, concerts, outdoors, families coping with mental health challenges. What the governor is signing today is simply put, going to make people safer. So people hopefully can breathe a little easier in Massachusetts, knowing that we have the strongest possible gun safety, common sense gun laws at, in hand. Second, we're here to celebrate staying ahead of the Supreme Court intent on taking us backward, not only Massachusetts, but all of our uh, residents. Whether it's the Bruin decision, reproductive freedom, or the right to love who you love, Massachusetts stands ready and able to reject archaic and harmful decisions. Third and finally, today we celebrate what we can achieve when we come together, work together, and talk to each other. There is no issue that we cannot solve, no matter how detailed and no matter how complex. The seven million people who live here, the seven million people who we collectively serve, deserve no less that when, whether it be with guns or any issue before us, in the next 36 hours, 36 days, 36 months, many of which, like gun reform, will create healthier, safer, and better lives for every person around the state. And many others which will lower costs and make Massachusetts a more affordable, equitable, and competitive place to live and raise a family. So the Senate stands ready to do just that. And Governor, I'm hopeful, as I said yesterday, that we have many more gatherings like this in the next few weeks. So congratulations to all on this momentous bill. Now I'd like to turn the microphone over to Majority Leader Cream. Thank you. Thank you, Madam President. The very first line of the Massachusetts Constitution declares that the, end, that the end of government is to protect the body 
political and to enable its citizens to enjoy in safety and tranquility their natural rights and blessings of life. Few laws more directly serve that end than the one we celebrate today. Gun violence, and even the specter of gun violence, is corrosive to our freedom and to all we hold dear in this Commonwealth. When we send our children to school, go to a movie, participate in a protest, or attend religious services without worrying about the possibility of gun violence, we are less happy, less free, and less able to maintain the social trust that binds us all together as a commonwealth if we had that worry. And when a shooting does take one of our neighbors from us, as it has, the entire commonwealth suffers, the entire country suffers. A human life with all its possibilities and promise is lost, and a family and a community are left devastated by grief and fear. An act modernizing firearm laws. Woo, that sounds great. That's our bill. It protects Massachusetts residents from gun violence. In doing so, it fulfills the state's constitution's most basic guarantee to the people of Massachusetts that we can safely, safely exercise our rights and enjoy the blessings of life. There are dozens of life-saving policies included in the law, several of which I'd like to briefly highlight. This law we're talking about today criminalizes the possession of Glock switches, auto sears, and other devices that convert semi-automatic firearms into automatic firearms. It gives law enforcement officials the tools they need to crack down on unserialized, untraceable ghost guns that have flooded our communities in recent years. It ensures that police have access to all the information they need when determining whether an applicant is suitable for a license to carry or FID card, including information about involuntary mental health hospitalization, information that wasn't available before. And it improves the collection and reporting of crime data which will help this Commonwealth target its investigation, enforcement, and training resources more effectively, while also enabling policy, policymakers to tailor future laws and regulations to emerging trends in gun crime. And Mr. Speaker, I've been here since 2014 as well, but there's always more to do. The law is a tremendous achievement, and there are many people I have to thank for making it possible. First and foremost, I want to thank Senate President Karen Spilka, who has long championed gun <laughs> who has long championed gun safety and gun violence prevention, and who made both goals goals a priority again this session. You know, behind every conference committee, there are the leaders. Who, who are really the success of the conference committee. So thank you. To my, I'd like to thank my Senate colleagues who provided valuable input on the law at every step of its legislative journey, and especially Senators Lovely and Ta, who served with me on the conference committee. And I'd like to thank House conferees led by Chairman Day, who brought to our negotiations a firm commitment to making Massachusetts safer by passing this critical law. And I'd like to thank Governor Healy and her team at the Executive Office of Public Safety and Security who shared their experience with the legislature throughout this process and who will be the ones implementing the law capable and carefully. And I'd like to thank the Massachusetts Chiefs of Police Association, gun safety organizations, and many other stakeholders for their ideas, their support, and their compassion. And I would be remiss, well, most important, I'd like to thank the survivors, the families of victims, the students, and the concerned citizens from all around the Commonwealth who raised their voices in the past and continue to raise them and said that Massachusetts had to do more to protect its residents from gun violence. And I would be remiss if I didn't thank the staff members that work so hard because we can write, we can think a law, we can pass a law, but the hard work, 
the hard work of the staff members that work day and night. I want to take a moment to thank, in my office, Richard Powell, Garrett Casey, Brittany Webb. <laughs> and I know Chair Day will have the opportunity to thank his staff as well, all of whom worked so hard. This law answers your call for action, each one of you, your call. It will save lives, and we should all be very proud of it. It is now my honor to introduce Chair Day. Now, there were no, there were no bad times, Mr. Speaker, between Chair Day and I. We always got along. We always made it easy. We, we never had any of those bad sessions. Uh, I enjoyed working with him. Uh, I'm, I'm happy with the outcome. Uh, I want to say that he was a wonderful partner against crime. So thank you, Chair Day. Good afternoon. Uh, let me start by saying for years, Senator Cream has been a champion of making our Commonwealth safer and has stood firm against those in her chamber who may believe that this bill was too long or that we might be trying to do too much. Senator Cream has and will continue to leave an indelible mark on our Commonwealth for the better. I'm grateful I had the opportunity to sit across from you and ultimately stand beside you today as we mark this achievement. So to Senator Cream, I say thank you very much. To Senate President Spilka, I thank you for your commitment on this important work and your willingness to move your chamber to create a better law. As the Governor said of this final product, what we've done will save lives. So thank you, Senator, for making that happen. <laughs> to Governor Healy, I'm heartened that we walk together. And I thank you for your decades of leadership in constantly striving to make us all safer. Your work as Attorney General and your leadership from the corner office has made our neighborhoods, our schools, our families, and all the residents of Massachusetts safer. Thank you. <laughs> to Speaker Mariano, let me say simply that we would not be standing here without the leadership and steel courage of Speaker Ron Mariano. <laughs> I am incredibly proud to serve in a house led by Speaker Mariano. He's been at the center of efforts to make us a better Commonwealth. And it was his drive that brought us here today. Under then Speaker Robert DeLeo's leadership, Ron Mariano led the effort to modernize our firearm laws in 2014. And he brought home in that year a landmark updating in this area of the law. In the face of a literal rewriting of our history from a rogue Supreme Court two years ago, Speaker Mariano made a commitment to the House to the legislature and to the residents of Massachusetts that we would make the Commonwealth safer for all. Mr. Speaker, you delivered on that promise. Thank you. And to those who have already rushed forward to say that they will challenge this law in the courts, I say bring it on. Let me help you in your inevitable search for legislative intent by being clear here today. Our legislative intent in modernizing our firearm laws, as Her Excellency so eloquently stated, is to save lives. That's it. Every single provision of this law was drafted with that intent. Today we save lives by improving our extreme risk protective order law, our red flag law, by tightening that final safety net that prevents those who are at risk to themselves or others from accessing a firearm. We do this by allowing our medical professionals, our law enforcement professionals, our school administrators to alert a court to a clear and present danger. Today we save lives by updating our prohibition on assault-style firearms to now include those features that turn a gun into a weapon of war. Today we save lives by ensuring that all firearms are properly registered, which has been the tradition of the Commonwealth since the days of the Plymouth and Massachusetts Bay colonies. We require that all firearms are serialized so that our law enforcement professionals, those who are on the literal front lines of the battle against the trafficking of firearms, have the tools that they told us they need to rein in these merchants of death 
who would otherwise be flooding our neighborhoods with guns. Today we save lives by reexamining our violence prevention programming and by taking advantage of federal funds devoted to reducing gun violence in our neighborhoods. And today we save lives by improving the training of firearm licensees. We heard from firearm owners and their advocates who were adamant and consistent in their view that live fire training is an essential component of responsible gun ownership. We agree that if you own a firearm, you ought to know how to handle it, store it, and shoot it responsibly. We do this to save lives. There's much to celebrate today, and I want to thank everyone who played a part in passing this legislation into law. To my colleagues in both chambers, the Senate and the House, to the Governor and her administration, to our law enforcement professionals, to our gun owners, to gun safety advocates, to all residents of Massachusetts. And I will step out now and take the lead from Senator Creeb in thanking my staff for their tireless work over the last two years. That began with a charge from Speaker Mariano, ultimately led us to a listening tour around the Commonwealth. Patrick Prendergast, Alex O'Connell, Talia Quinn, thank you very much. <laughs> to all advocates and all involved in this law, thank you for helping to ensure that we continue to live in the safest and greatest state in the Union. It's now my honor to introduce Juanita Matt Batchelor. In 2014, Juanita tragically lost her beloved son, Darrell Lee Jenkins, Jr., to gun violence. Since then, she's been tirelessly fighting for justice for him, while supporting others who are impacted by homicide. Understanding how difficult it is to overcome grief, and driven by the desire to, to turn her individual pain into a communal gain, Juanita created the Darrell Lee Jenkins, Jr. Resource Center to address the needs of families impacted by senseless violence. Juanita, thank you for your passion and commitment. Thank you all. Good afternoon. My name is Juanita Batchelor, and I am honored to be with you today. Ten years ago, I lost my son, Daryl Jenkins, Jr., to gun violence. He was only 23 years old when he was murdered, and he left two daughters behind. Ten years later, his case is still unsolved. I stand here today not just representing my family, but the way too many other families who are still waiting for answers are losing loved ones to gun violence. This is the reason I started the Daryl Lee Jenkins Jr. Resource Center. I started the DLJ for families like mine, families who feel alone and have no hope, and to provide a safe space for children whose parents were taken from them or who have been traumatized by gun violence. I want the DLJ to be a place of healing, that safe space, and a resource for the entire Springfield community. Our mission is to build healthier communities, inspire change, and fight for justice. Today, I am inspired by the change that is represented by this bill. We need policy change to make sure our communities are safer from gun violence. I am thrilled to see this bill being passed and so happy to, issue, to see issues like ghost guns and crime gun data analysts addressed along with many other important com components. I am grateful to Governor Healy and our State House leaders for committing to the work of stopping the gun violence that is causing so much pain and trauma in our communities. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to lift up Springfield community today. I am grateful to you all. I would like to, I would, okay. I would now like to introduce Chief Thomas Fowler of the Massachusetts Chief of Police Association. Thank you. Thank you, Juanita, and thank you for the important work you do every day. <clears throat> Governor Healy, legislators and guests,
please know the Massachusetts Chiefs of Police Association expresses gratitude for the collaborative effort of the Senate, House of Representatives, and the Governor's Office in addressing gun reform to enhance safety in the Commonwealth. The proposed measure exemplifies a balanced approach aiming <clears throat> to expand the definition of firearms to cover, to cover unfinished frames and receivers and to require firearms to be serialized. These steps are expected to play a significant role in eliminating ghost guns from our communities, prohibiting unlicensed individuals from using 3D printers or CNC milling machines to manufacture firearms is predicted to lessen the pro proliferation of weapons throughout the state. Additionally, the, propose, the proposal to establish a process for police departments to share information on involuntary hospitalization seeks to provide licensing authorities with re resources to make a well-informed and timely decision <clears throat> regarding the suitability of license holders. I would also like to point out, under current law, a Glock switch needs to be affixed to a gun for there to be any punishment. The switch <clears throat> by itself carries no punishment at all. The bill addresses and remedies the situation. These measures represent a significant effort to promote public safety, and we are committed to working closely with the administration to address any challenges that may arise in the implementation process and ensure that the law's provisions are effectively put into place. It's now my pleasure to turn it back over to Governor Healy. Thank you, Chief. Um, thank you so much, Chief. And I also want to acknowledge District Attorney Kevin Hayden, uh, Senator Liz Miranda, uh, Representative Williams, Representative Farley Bouvier, Representative Vargas, Representative Barber, Representative Cairns, among others who, uh, who've been here today. Um, many thanks to everyone, and particularly to, to Juanita for, you know, giving voice to a story that is all too familiar to so many here today. Um, now, thanks to the great work of the legislature, um, I am going to ask that we all move over to the desk where I am going to sign this now officially into law. And I ask everyone from the podium to, to join us over there. Thank you.